Remember how M1 changed the entire computing industry? No, no, it didn't just change it, it straight up roasted it. M1 had performance per watt figures that were, at the time, almost unheard of. It offered i7 level performance at only a fraction of the power. But here's the thing, M1 didn't just come out of thin air. Apple had been perfecting its own silicon for years, right under our noses. And the chip that laid the very foundation for Apple Silicon on Mac, the A12 X and Z, and the A14 Bionic. These weren't just your ordinary chips for iPad and iPhone. They laid the very foundation for the future of the Mac. Today, we're looking at the chips that made M1 possible. Before we talk about the A12Z and the A14, we need to talk about why Apple wanted to ditch Intel in the first place. For years, Apple relied on Intel to power their Macs, and at first, it worked. Intel's chips helped Apple push performance per watt gains in their transition from PowerPC to Intel. And it was this very transition that made it possible for Apple to build some of their most beloved products like the MacBook Air, which relied on Intel's superior performance per watt figures. However, like all good things in life, it must eventually come to a stop at one point. For a while, Intel's chips delivered solid performance, but as the years went on, Apple started hitting a wall and they couldn't do anything about it because this wall was Intel. You see, Intel had one big problem. They were stuck on the 14 nanometer process node. And when I say stuck, I mean really stuck. Like that one friend who refuses to upgrade from their iPhone 6 kind of stuck. While AMD, Apple, Samsung, and the rest of the industry switched to a seven nano process node in 2018, Intel kept milking the hell out of 14 nanometer, a process node that was introduced in 2015. They just kept refreshing and adding more plus signs to it like they were playing some kind of RPG game. In fact, they only stopped using it in 2020, which means that the 2016 and 2019 MacBook Pro were essentially built upon the same process node. That is four whole years of Macs running on the same outdated process node. And it wasn't just a small problem, it was a massive one. By 2018, Apple's MacBooks were struggling with heat issues, thermal throttling, and battery life limitations all thanks to Intel's aging architecture. Meanwhile, Apple's own chips inside iPhones and iPads were getting faster and more efficient every year. And that's when Apple realized. Tim, our Macs are overheating. The Intel chips are too hot. Don't we make our own chips? Yeah, but they're for iPads and iPhones only. And they're more efficient than Intel's? They sure are. Oh. You didn't have to cut me off. Apple had spent over a decade designing their own ARM-based chips that were more efficient, powerful, and years ahead of Intel's steam engines, and yet they were only using them in their iPhones and iPads, while the Mac was stuck with hot and power-hungry Intel chips. And that's when Apple realized that this entire time, the answer to their Mac problem was in their own silicon. When Apple launched the A12X Bionic in 2018, alongside the iPad Pro, it was scary fast for what was essentially just a bigger iPhone XS chip. It featured 8 cores in a 4P4E config, paired with a 7-core GPU. Sounds familiar? That was the same config as the base M1 MacBook Air. In fact, the A12X was so powerful that Apple deemed it unnecessary to make a new chip for the 2020 iPad Pro. Instead, they just unlocked an extra GPU core and rebadged it as the A12Z. But here's the real kicker. When Apple tested ARM Max, they didn't use M1. They didn't even use the A14. In fact, they used the modified A12Z. Apple's developer transition kit, technically the first Mac to run on Apple Silicon, was powered by none other than a modified A12Z. Although it was just a repurposed iPad chip, it was Apple's first test run for ARM Macs. Developers got their hands on it and the results were impressive. It ran Mac OS, it emulated Intel apps via Rosetta 2, and it proved that ARM chips weren't just mobile class, they were desktop capable. At this point, it was crystal clear. Apple didn't just want to replace Intel, they wanted to be better than them. But the A12Z, as good as it was, had one limitation. It was still a repurposed iPad chip, not a chip built for the Mac. To truly take on Intel, Apple must design something bigger, something designed for the future. And that job belonged to the one last stepping stone, the A14 Bionic. The A14 wasn't just another iPad chip. It was the final proof that Apple Silicon was desktop ready. With the first ever five nanometer process, more efficient cores, and single core speeds rivaling Intel desktop chips, Apple had already cooked up the foundation to the M1. And at this point, Apple had already put all the missing puzzle pieces together. And in November, 2020, they dropped M1. <laughs> M1 wasn't just a step forward, it was a statement. 
For years, people doubted that ARM-based chips could replace x86 processors. Apple then just proved them wrong. They obliterated the competition, posting insane battery life while outperforming some of Intel's best CPUs, and even emulated x86 apps faster than on some Intel Macs. Intel had grown complacent that this was their very own doing. Necessity is the mother of all inventions, and Apple, well, deemed it necessary to ditch Intel. And at the end of the day, Apple Silicon isn't just about moving away from Intel. It was about redefining what a computer chip could be. Instead of being shackled by the compromises of x86, Apple built something entirely new, a chip designed for efficiency, performance, and seamless integration with their own software. And the results speak for themselves. M1 didn't just match Intel, it surpassed it in ways no one ever expected, from the fanless MacBook Airs to the more powerful MacBook Pro delivering workstation performance. But the real question is, was this Apple's inevitable evolution, or did Intel's stagnation force their hand to do this? Or better yet, would Apple Silicon Macs even exist if Intel didn't hold them back? Let me know in the comments below. And hey, if you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to hit the sub button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on the next one. And as always, thanks for watching, love you all, have a nice day.